Oh, okay, uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Okay, um, it's September 14, 2023, and the time is around 1.24 a.m. Okay, my topic for this session will be a long video format discussion. This is a continuation of alternating current machines, and this will now be lesson number 10. Oh, uh, we are running smooth on AC machines. Okay, let's proceed. <coughs> the topic for this morning will be alternating current machines, lesson number 10. And the title of the topic is Voltage and Current uh, Vector Diagrams and Equations. If the power factor of the load is a leading power factor, meaning the power factor of the load is leading. Leading power factor. Uh, <coughs> leading power factor meaning the load is of the form of what's happening. The load is of the form Z equal to maybe R minus J X of C. If the reactance of the load is uh, a capacitor or uh, a synchronous motor, maybe supposed to be the power factor of the load is leading. Okay. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the figure of this one. For this morning, I will bring out again the original uh, transformer, primary, and secondary connections. Okay, uh, let's proceed. <clears throat> on the primary side, uh, we got an RP, this is XP, this is the winding on the primary, the applied voltage on the primary is actually termed to as VP, uh, this is the one coming from the transmission line or, yeah, from the transmission line. So whatever voltage that will appear here, that will be the one coming from the transmission lines coming from the generator side. On the secondary side, we got an RS excess. Uh, this is the impedance drop of the secondary winding and connected across the load. Uh, this is case number three actually. There is a load, right? Because case number one, we got no load. Case number two, we got the load, but the power factor of the load is lagging, meaning the the reactance is actually plus uh, J X of L. That is for lagging. And this is for leading. This is for lagging. So this is now case number three. So the power factor will be leading. So <coughs> for this load here, we are given the KBA. We are given the BS. BS is the one that, that goes to our uh, household, so uh, the one which is 120 volts, right? And theta, the angle of the power factor, it is uh, implicit here, leading. Because the title for the meantime is uh, the power factor is leading. Okay, I, I will try to use this one so it looks good. On the primary side, we got an inch of P. The number of turns in the, on the secondary side, we got the total number of turns designated by capital letter M with the subscript S. <coughs> okay, uh, before uh, I will try to bring out the vector diagrams, uh, I would like to bring out some equations needed in the formulation in the equation of <coughs> in the computation of this uh, B sub S here. We are interested on B sub S. Okay, and the value of B sub P. B sub S is actually the voltage across the load. And B sub P is actually the input voltage coming from the transmission line. So before we could attain this voltage B sub S here to be 120. Okay. We pass by so many things to obtain the value of B sub P. So actually, uh, it seems this is now the design equations for a transformer to attain the voltage B sub S on the secondary if the input voltage on the primary is B sub P. 
Okay. <coughs> uh, the number one equation I will try to bring out is uh, the transformation ratio. Okay. Uh, this is just a, a review before uh, we will proceed with the vector diagrams. Transformation ratio for a transformer will be the ratio of the induced voltage on the primary over the induced voltage on the secondary. Transformation ratio is the voltage across the primary divided by the induced voltage on the secondary. The voltage that appears here on the winding. Induced voltage. The induced voltage on the primary divided by the induced voltage on the secondary is termed to as the transformation ratio. And the other equivalent of uh, what you call this uh, transformation ratio is uh, the ratio of uh, the secondary current over the primary current. That is, uh, uh, we will equate this one, this should be equal to IS over IP. Uh, how come uh, we bring out this one? Uh, this one emanates from the volt ampere thing, volt ampere, volt ampere, volt ampere. Or primary should be equal to the volt ampere of the secondary. Uh, on the <coughs> primary side, the voltage is E sub S and the current is I sub S, right? On the no no oh this is primary so primary this is primary so this this should be both primary should be equal to the induced voltage on the secondary times the current on the secondary okay so if we try to divide this one by es and we divide this one by es. This ES cancels, right? But uh, there is still an IP over there. So if we divide this again by IP, and we divide this again by IP, okay, this IP cancel with this. So what comes out? This is EP over ES. Okay, what remains on the right will be IS over IP. This is IS over IP. So this one emanates from this concept here. That is the volt amperes on the primary equal to the volt ampere on the secondary. So if we try to substitute the voltage and current with the proper subscript and then try to rearrange the equation, what will come out will be EP over ES, it's one. It's actually IS over IP, it is this one. So the two formulas on how to take the value of the transformation ratio for any transformer will be the ratio of the induced voltage of the primary over the induced voltage on the secondary equal to IS okay, over IP. Then in here, <coughs> if we try to cover this one, we could compute for E sub P. E sub P will be the product transformation ratio times E sub S, considering the primary side. And uh, in here, if we try to cover the, the first, first one, IS or IP rather will be IS over A. So, okay, we will compute for this. IP should be IS over A. So it's over A. Also with respect to the primary side. Later on, we will be needing these values here when we go to the vector diagram. And for the computation of the secondary current, okay, it should be KBA, what will, whatever the KBA of the load, times 1000, over the terminal voltage here. Uh, the one that goes to our house is it's 120. Okay, so IS will be the KBA of the load times 1000 over VS. Later on, we'll be needing this one also. Okay, uh, let's proceed with the vector diagram of the voltages and currents. Uh, am I still on camera? I think so. Okay, I am still on camera. For the voltage and current vector diagrams, we will start with the on the uh, secondary side. Okay, I will try to erase this one, so it it will look good. 
Anyway, you understood already what I have written on the board. Right? Okay, I will start to the secondary side. We will try to plot this BS here. This is BS. It is at uh, 0 degrees. So BS is actually BS angle 0 degree. It is this. This is 0 degree, right? Right? So this is BS from here to here. Okay? And since the power factor of the load is actually leading, the current is uh, on the first quadrant. Uh, this is plus theta. This is plus theta. That's why it's leading. Uh, where is the current? Uh, coming from the origin, this is the secondary current. Okay, this is one. So this is BS. This is IS. BS is the voltage across this. IS is this one. Uh, it's on the first quadrant because the power factor is leading. The difference of the angle between BS and IS is actually theta. The power factor angle, right? Okay, uh, let's try to compute. To compute for E sub S, to compute for E sub S, uh, we must have to take into consideration the effect of RS and XS. RS and XS are uh, it's the internal and inter internal resistance and reactance of the coil. Whether we like it or not, there will be a small resistance in a small reactance. So actually when current passes here, the current that passes here is actually IS, right? There should be a voltage trap. So meaning to say uh, whatever induced voltage is here, as current passes here, it will drop a certain voltage. So BS will be will actually less than ES by the value of IS plus uh, the vectorial sum of RS plus X of S. <coughs> so through that, this is the current, right? Uh, the voltage drop IS times RS is actually in parallel with the key value current. It is this. This is IS. So the voltage drop due to ISRS is this one. Okay, they are in parallel. Right? It is this. And perpendicular with it is actually the voltage drop due to the reactance. Okay, uh, they are not of the same value. This is a real, uh, real voltage drop. This is a, an imaginary voltage drop. And it is perpendicular, perpendicular, right? So this is ISXS. And the vectorial sum of ISRS and ISXS is actually ISZS. Okay? Because impedance is actually the resistance plus J X of S. Okay? So to compute for B sub S now, it will be B sub S plus ISRS plus J I sub S X sub S and that will be equal to E sub S. So if we try to connect a point from the origin to this uh, point here, that now represents IS. IS or ES is actually this one. It's a bigger value than BS because there was a voltage drop due to RS and SS. Okay? Uh, this will be referred to the secondary side. Okay, we are on the secondary side. So whatever value we got on the secondary side, we try to project it on the primary side. Okay, project it. Okay, uh, let's project. Uh, let's try to bring a uh, project ES to the primary side. Uh, we will be using the relation EP, the one we derive over there, equal to ES. A times ES. Right? This is one, the one we computed here. It's this. So if we try to multiply that by A, that will be the induced voltage on the primary. Okay? There is an induced voltage here, but by using the transformation ratio, we, could, uh, we can find the value of uh, the induced voltage on the primary due to the secondary current. Right? Okay? So the basis of the value of the induced voltage on the primary is actually uh, 
on the basis of the what will be the computed value by s right so if we now try to project this uh or this uh, es here where is it we project this one onto the other side okay ap will be equal to negative es uh is it correct ap is equal to es ap a times a. yeah yeah it's correct we will try to project this one on the other side uh, this, this will now be the value it is this right so we put a negative sign because uh, if this is plus on the other side the other direction should be minus right it is this okay uh, we try to project also i sub s on the secondary side and the relation will be by using this one here Right? So if this is IS, okay, the equivalent of this in terms of primary is actually IS over A, but uh, since uh, this is uh, the reverse of this, this should be with the value of negative IS over A. This is the primary current due to the secondary current. Or uh, this is the primary induced voltage due to the secondary induced voltage. Right? And uh, perpendicular to ES is actually the neutral flux. Perpendicular, meaning if this is ES, an angle with a difference of 90 degrees, that will be the location of the neutral flux. Okay? So when we draw the, what you call this, uh, hysteresis in eddy current flows, okay, this will be our basis here, the, uh, the, uh, this direction here. Uh, the one that goes up here is actually hysteresis plus just hysteresis. The one that goes here, okay, will be the so-called eddy current loss. Hysteresis loss, this one that goes up, the one that goes here will be the eddy current loss. So the vectorial sum of the AD current and hysteresis is actually the no-load current. Uh, we discussed this one. If the load on the secondary is nothing, the transformer will still draw a current and that current is turned to as the no-load current. No -load current. Right? It is due to the hysteresis loss and the AD current loss and that will be the no-load current. Okay? So on the primary side, there will be two types of current, okay? It will be the current due to IS when we transfer it to the primary plus the current drawn by the losses on the primary, right? And the, it is represented by I no load. So the total current IP here will be this current here, okay? which was projected coming from the secondary side plus the no load current. So the pictorial sum, uh, we use the parallelogram method. This one is parallel with this and this one here is parallel with this. So the pictorial sum of this current here plus this current is actually the total primary current. Total primary current. This bit. So if we now know the direction of the total primary current, okay, <coughs> It is this direction here. The value IPRP, that primary current passes through RP and XP, right? So there will be a voltage trap due to the resistance, it is this. And the voltage trap due to the reactance is actually perpendicular with respect to this, it is this. Okay? And uh, this hypotenuse is actually IP, IPCP, right? right? The vectorial sum of IPRP plus uh, IPXP is actually IPZP. So if we try to add now uh, this voltage here, the uh, AP, negative e, ES or negative A times ES plus IPRP plus J IPXP now represents the terminal voltage that, it, that will be applied on the secondary. Okay, uh, it is something like this. Uh, this is the negative ES. Okay, 
there will be a drop here IPRP perpendicular with respect to it is actually uh, IPXP and the vectorial sum of this one plus this plus this is actually the total applied voltage B primary it is this so the vectorial sum of EP plus the product of IP times the quantity RP plus GXP will represent B sub P that's the meaning of this vector diagram A right but uh, <coughs> The total current uh, actually comprises it of a, a value negative IS over A plus the no load current, I no load. Right? Due to the losses, this is uh, due to the current coming from the secondary side. So the vectorial sum of this okay, actually represents I sub P. It is this. Okay, now that's the vector diagrams of the voltages and currents. Considering for the meantime, this is the secondary side, this is the primary side. So if we now try to bring out the formula on the secondary side, <coughs> uh, this ES here is actually BS plus the product ISRS plus J I sub S X sub S. It is this. Right? And there should be a relation AP equal to negative IS over A. And uh, the total primary current will be the no load current plus uh, the current coming from the secondary due to the load. And that is actually negative IS over A. This is. So considering the primary side, okay, the total voltage applied to the terminal of uh, the primary side will be equal to the induced voltage on the primary plus the drop here due to the no load current plus the current due to the current up, due to the load on the secondary. That is uh, IP times the quantity RP plus the XOP. But uh, this one here is a complicated thing. Uh, it's a no load current due to the losses plus the current coming from the secondary, right? In which the value is actually this one, right? So this IP here on the primary got two components. It's the no load current current due to the internal losses, due to the core losses, okay? Whether we like it or not, there should be losses, right? Plus the current on the secondary due to the load on the secondary. So the both final voltage and how to take the primary voltage will be negative A times ES. Uh, this was projected coming from the secondary, right? Plus the product of IP from the quantity RP plus GX of A. This. So this is the first formula and how to compute for B sub S. This is the second formula, how to compute for B sub P. B sub S is the voltage across this. And B sub P is actually the voltage across this. So as you can see, B P is actually greater than B sub S. Right? Because uh, as we deliver the current going to the load, there should be a voltage drop here due to the internal losses. Right? And due to the internal losses on the secondary sides. So actually B P is greater than B sub S. Okay, uh, that's it guys. Uh, that's the vector diagram of a transformer having a load with the power factor uh, leading on the secondary side. Okay, uh, this is Professor David G. Good morning from Los Angeles.